Hi, welcome to the Praxis Test Prep channel. My name is Tasha. I'm a former high school biology teacher, and today I'm going to walk you through some life science problems, specifically genetics, from the Praxis 5436 exam. Okay, problem one. A homozygous organism with brown fur has babies with a homozygous, homozygous organism with white fur. All of the babies have brown fur. Which of the following is true about the alleles for brown and white fur? So let's look at some of the um, highlighting factors. So we have one homozygous organism mating with another homozygous organism. That means that they're either going to be big T, big T, or little t, little t. So let's look at number one. So number one, it says the alleles for white and brown fur are co-dominant. And we are noticing that the babies all have brown fur. What co-dominant means is that both of the white and the brown would be expressed equally. So you would have a white and brown fur little baby bear, um, which we're not seeing. So a good example of co-dominance, if they ask about it, is blood typing. So if you have blood type A and B, those can be co-dominantly expressed on your blood cells. C, let's look at the allele for brown fur, is carried on the sex chromosomes. You're going to see that more often in males and females that expressed. Um, D, the allele for white fur is dominant over brown fur. Or B, the allele for brown fur is dominant over white. Since we are seeing that all the babies have brown fur, the answer will be B. Okay, problem two. Which of the following of Mendel's laws best describes how different alleles for a particular locus are separated into different gametes at random during sexual reproduction. So our first law is Mendel's law of segregation. What this means is you have two copies of each allele and that those get separated or segregated during, during gamete production. And you also get one copy from each parent in the offspring. B is Mendel's law of dominance. This we see in question number one, where we had the brown fur organism that was dominated over the white fur organism. So when you see one phenotype or how the organism actually looks expressed. And then C, we have Mendel's law of independent assortment. That means that when you have a two pairs of traits or two traits, they're independent of each other. So one is not linked to the other one. You will sometimes see this with sex-linked traits, but not necessarily in Mendel's laws. Mendel's law of Punnett squares doesn't exist. <laughs> so when we're looking at the specific examples of this problem, we have different alleles on a particular location, which is locus. They separate into the different gametes. So our answer is Mendel's law of segregation. Okay, on to our next problem. A sample of deoxyribonucleic acid was taken from a biotechnology lab for further analysis in the determination of an organism's genome. So just a reminder that that deoxyribonucleic acid is DNA. The following sequ sequence was determined, 5' prime to 3', prime, so it's T-A-G-G-C, so thymine, adenine, guanine, guanine, cytosine, cytosine. Which of the following sequences given below best depicts the sequence of complementary DNA strand written 5' prime to 3'? Prime? So that's going to be our key here. This is a little bit of a tricky problem. So let's write that sequence that we know. So we have that thymine, adenine, guanine, guanine, cytosine, cytosine. And again, that is 5' prime to 3'. Prime. We know the complementary strand of DNA is going to be the exact opposite. So it's going to run 3' prime to 5'. Prime. So let's match these up. So thymine bonds to adenine. And just a reminder there, that's like sticks to sticks and curves to curves. And guanine bonds with cytosine. And again, you have it there. But remember that this strand, we can't just say that this is the answer because this is three prime to five prime. And they're asking specifically for five prime to three prime. So let's look at the one that is going to be the exact reverse of this order. So it's gonna go G, G, C, C, T A and that is going to be our answer. So our answer is actually going to fall under D is G G C C T A. So D is our final answer. Okay, so problem number four: a gene required for the structure and function of hemoglobin has the following partial sequence in the wild type. So it's G T A G T C. 
a spontaneous mutation caused a new gene to have the following sequence, altering only the first nucleotide shown in bold. So we see that G has been turned to T. Which of the following best describes the mutation observed in this, in this gene? So let's look at the our options. We have substitution, and that is replacing one gene with another. And then we have B, that is assortment. So assortment doesn't actually exist as a mutation, so we can cross that off. C, insertion, that would be when you were inserting a nucleotide in the sequence and kind of shifting that codon over. And deletion is deleting a nucleotide and also shifting it the other way. So what we're seeing in here is we're actually seeing that replacement, so that thymine is replaced. So we have A, substitution is going to be our answer. So yeah, guanine is, re is replaced by thymine. So A, substitution is the correct answer. I hope this is helpful. If you're looking for more ways to study, check out study.com. There's more videos and the Praxis Test Prep course. As a study.com member, you get full access to hundreds of practice problems like the ones I just walked you through, as well as some targeted instruction for some topics you might still be struggling with along with some test-taking strategies to help you maximize your score on test day. Finally, we want to hear from you. Please like and subscribe to today's video if you thought it was helpful. And in the comments down below, please let us know if there's any specific topics you want us to cover next. Good luck and happy studying!